Assalamu alaikum guys. I know it's been a while since I uploaded any content onto this channel. You know, there were a lot of factors that contributed to this, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm back and inshallah, continue to make a lot of health and wellness content for you guys to enjoy inshallah. On top of not uploading any content, one thing I was also lacking in was actually engaging in any sort of physical activity during this time. I went through a lot of really big life changes, like trying to grow my family and changing my career and a lot of different life situations that I'm sure you all can relate to. What this meant was that physical activity kind of took a backseat to all my other responsibilities. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had a layoff from physical activity for a little while. You know, a lot of us, uh, because of COVID-19, haven't really been able to engage in physical activity the way we wanted to. Those of us who are used to working out in the gym really didn't have that option because the gyms were closed. And many of us really don't know how to do home workouts. There's also the issue of people who are just lazy and they want to take three months to kind of rest. You know, we all have different set of circumstances, but uh, one thing I want to talk about today and pretty much the topic of the video is what are the negative health consequences of not engaging in physical activity for a long period of time. I also want to talk about a safe and effective way of how to reintroduce physical activity into our lives without getting injured and without burning out. So lastly, I'm going to share with you guys is my own personal journey and how I've reintroduced physical activity into my life and kind of the pitfalls and hurdles that I've had to cross in order to you know, be consistent with it. When we take a significantly long time away from training, our body goes through some negative physiological adaptations that we like to call detraining. A detrained individual will start to lose a lot of their cardiovascular fitness as well as their muscular strength and size. Those of us who were used to regularly engage in high intensity training before we stop training will see that the detraining effect is delayed by a few more weeks. Eventually, no matter how hard you've been training, you're gonna to start to see the effects of detraining after it's been a significant amount of time. The way that this is gonna manifest is that you're gonna get much more tired than you used to. The same mile that you used to be able to run in six minutes will maybe take you seven or eight minutes. And by the end, you'll probably wanna puke. Not only that, but the time it's gonna take you to recover to do another lap is gonna have significantly increased. In terms of strength training, Muscular strength can actually persist for a lot longer than cardiovascular fitness. And this is due to a phenomenon known as muscle motor learning. This is the ability for the body to ingrain motor patterns after practicing a movement hundreds and thousands of times. But as we said, the detraining effect will eventually catch up to you and your muscular size will have diminished and you will not be able to lift as much weight as you used to. Also for most people, health and fitness is a lifestyle. So when one starts to diminish, the other parts are also gonna diminish as well. So that includes your diet and nutrition. This means reduced muscle definition and probably at a higher body fat percentage. So we've seen all the negative health consequences of not engaging in physical activity. You know what, this has inspired us to get back in the gym, start being active. You know, we wanna pick up where we left off, get, get our lives back in order. Honestly, this enthusiasm is great. But before we go and start lacing up on your running shoes, there are a few key points that we need to understand. You are not gonna be able to go through that same routine that you used to go through. That six minute mile that you built up to, you're gonna have to build up to it again. You're not gonna be able to jump right back into it. Although on the plus side, because of muscle motor learning and because of the experience that you already have with it, it shouldn't take as long to get there. Diving in head first and trying to pick up where you left off is a recipe for disaster. In all honesty, it is actually very difficult to predict how likely someone is to get injured. But there are a few broad recommendations that we can make to the general public. One of which is a severe reduction in training volume and intensity. Research has shown that even one solid set of work can be enough to trigger the training adaptation in many individuals. It can be a very humbling experience to have to go back and use lighter weights than what you're used to in a very short workout. But take this as an opportunity to train the ego and focus more on your health and more on your goals rather than what people think about you and what they expect you to lift. Patience is key here. You've been here already. You know you're capable of doing more. Just take it step by step and before you know it, you'll be right back where you were before or even better. As you know, I always like to meld spirituality with fitness. And this actually brings hadith to mind. The Prophet wasallam said, with everything there is eagerness and with every eagerness there is a weakening. Imagine a scenario like this, as a kid, you had the habit of reading Quran for two hours every night. But then one day as you grew older, you kind of grew out of it and you actually stopped reading Quran entirely. One day you listen to a really spiritually uplifting lecture and you want to get back into reading Quran like you used to. If you really tried that, most likely you'd find that you'd burn out within a few days and maybe even relapse into not reading any Quran at all. The appropriate thing to do would be to introduce Quran into your life little by little and increase the length that you recite as you become more proficient. Coming back to physical activity, one way we can try to ensure that we don't injure ourselves or burn out is to try to listen to our body. If one day you are feeling too sore or too tired, 
don't be afraid to dial it back a little bit or even take an impromptu rest day if you need to. Your health and fitness should be a long-term goal. So even if you do have to dial it back just a little bit one day, in the grand scheme of things, you'll be more consistent throughout the rest of the training cycle. So it's a smart plan. Another thing to consider is actually slowing down the tempo of your exercises and maybe even using modifications to the regular exercises that you do. So if, for example, using a box squat instead of a regular squat until you're ready to use the full range of motion. Lastly, and I know we've heard this all before so many times, but you really need to drill this into your head. You need to manage your sleep, your diet, and your water intake in order to really maximize your fitness and health potential. Now that you're reintroducing physical activity, you'll need to make sure that your body is properly fueled in order to get through those workouts and also well rested so you can recover for the next session. In terms of my own approach to physical activity and getting out from a layoff, is really just focusing on just getting something done, some sort of physical activity. If that means doing a brisk walk for 30 minutes, then that's what I'll do. It's really just about consistency for me. I know that this method of training isn't gonna get me right away to squatting and bench pressing the numbers that I used to, but my goals are different now. It's about health and wellness for me. And you know what, because of my busy schedule, if I can get that done, then I'm happy. On top of that, I have first-hand experience with burnouts. In the beginning, when I was really trying to get back into fitness, what I would do was try to mimic the volume and intensity of before I uh, took a break from training. What that led to was being extremely sore and not wanting to work out for a few weeks, which meant more time that I'm not engaging in physical activity. My current approach to training allows me to get some sort of physical activity in every day, and on top of that, I'll be able to build on it as my strength and my endurance improves. I hope this video was helpful for anybody who is really struggling to get back into fitness after a long layoff and maybe giving you some practical advice on how to safely reintegrate that into your life. If you guys have any further questions about this video or something was unclear, please feel free to message me and inshallah I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos or ways that I can improve the format, please let me know in the comments below. Jazakallah khair for watching and remember, lift with purpose. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.